Yeah, hi everybody. I want to show you how to create or set up a flexible GraphQL backend in five minutes. So I have to rush a little bit. <laughs> I'm from Concentric Munich and yeah, um, let's start with, let's say uh, we want to build an Instagram clone and therefore we need some kind of uh, backend. In this case, I would like to introduce to you GraphQL which is a cloud provider uh, hosted or located in Berlin. And they say th it's the easiest way to set up a GraphQL backend. Uh, so let's say, let's check this, this out. <laughs> After registration and signing in. So one second. Here we go. Oh, that costs time? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so here we are. It's the GraphQL console, and we have to uh, create a new project or just let's uh, reuse this one after resetting all data and give it a cool name. Come on. And let's call it InstaCat. And you might guess where this will go <laughs> to. <laughs> so uh, we need to uh, set up the, the data model. In this case, we just need a new type. Uh, it's uh, a post, of course. And a post consists of some fields. And uh, of course, we need some description. Uh, I don't, uh, so I had a typo, of course. Description, and this is of course a string, a required field, and we need of course another one. Image. This is an image URL, and I guess you might see it. Uh, so it's big enough. So after defining uh, this new type, uh, a post. Um, we can just switch over and fill in some first data in this data editor. And just let me grab this URL and some description. So on the first entry, one moment. Yep. So now you might guess this is a, just a grid a table and I can fill some sample data here. And the next step, I just want to uh, have a look into my, my data. And therefore, there's this graphical embedded here. Uh, if you never heard of GraphQL, uh, let's assume you want to get a JSON response and just define in a query which uh, fields this is um, containing. So here in this case, and I can make it a little bit bigger, we don't want to fetch for users, but all posts. And here you might already notice that we have this um, syntax highlighting and field completion. And so it already knows that there is some description field in an image URL and so on. And there was also some created and updated stuff. And this is already built in into the schema of GraphQL. So this graphical tool here just uses this information here. And there would also be uh, embedded uh, documentation. But we don't use it and just start this to hurry up. And you see our first data. This was the sample data I uh, entered before. So, but we wanted to get further and want to see uh, if we can use this data in a web um, application. So therefore, one second. Oh, here. Uh, therefore, you can uh, go to this page. I should make it a little bit bigger. And you see there are already some example uh, projects based on different technologies. So let's say you want to use the Apollo library and let's say React. And you see here there's already a list of different tools, uh, projects, which you can just uh, clone. And I will just 
already think this one, which was um, I would normally would just download it in a, and embed it in a, or open it in my uh, favorite IDE. You might guess I already prepared something. I already opened it here in the um, project. It's in web start and just uh, have. At this point now, I just have to uh, connect this front end to the back end, of course, and this is all done by just uh, sorry, just um, editing this URL. And I have to rush a little bit. <laughs> Two minutes left. <laughs> uh, se one second, please. So come on. Here we go. And there's this endpoint endpoint button here, where I just simply can copy the URL into my project. Yep. And let's start it. So one thousand. You see in the background, it's just compiling at this point. Of course, I did the npm install already, and now here you are, here you go, here we go, and I have my first post <laughs> in Instacat, and there's always some functionality built in. So there's a new post um, button, and this functionality is already you can already use. It's called mutation, and of course you can put more here, and this is my favorite. <laughs> and of course, we can delete it here. So somehow, okay, that was quite easy. Uh, I think you can, everybody of you can try it out, out easily. And just one last thing, I already prepared a simple React Native application, which choose, uh, should just work when I also adopt the endpoint URL. Give me a second, just to show you how easy it is to, uh, not easy here. <laughs> so I just have to adopt the, uh, make it quick and happy, so come on. And after that, I already should have, an, uh, was not so easy, <laughs> sorry for that. I just have to remove this. And almost done. <laughs> but you would normally see that then uh, if I don't have uh, made any, didn't have made any mistakes and typos, I would also have a React native application running in an iPhone simulator, which also uses the same backend. And this is all uh, backed by GraphQL. So thanks for listening. I know you got some